this week's reflection is based on Mark chapter 6 verses 35 to 41. So I'm just going to read that quickly. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with them. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. And the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified and they asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Now this passage comes directly after what we looked at last week, where we're seeing that Jesus taught that the coming of his kingdom was the work of God. All we had to do was to plant the seed and to give it every opportunity to grow. But the actual growth was the work of God. And having taught the crowds all day from a boat on the lake, it was evening and Jesus said to the disciples, okay, let's go to the other side. Now we meant the other side of Lake Galilee and they obediently set off to row, but it wasn't going to be a 10 minute row. It would be about eight kilometers across to the other side. However, the other side doesn't just mean geographically the other side of the lake, because on the other side was territory that did not belong to the Jewish people. In fact, the Jewish people wouldn't go there because they said it was just such an evil place. If we read on, and to the next bit of the story when they reached there they came across a man who was so terribly demonized that he was completely out of control he roamed among the tombs he couldn't be shackled he'd simply break the chains they put on him he would continually cry out and cut himself this was what was going to greet them on the other side but they were willing to go because jesus said come on let's go to the other side after all, he'd just been teaching them about the growth of God's kingdom was God's work and they just had to be obedient. Jesus had been teaching all day. He was tired. He fell asleep in the back of the boat. But we're told a furious storm blew up. The waves began to swamp the boat. Now storms were not uncommon on the Sea of Galilee. It's surrounded by hills and just its sort of geographical positioning means you could get little squalls. But these men, most of them, were fishermen who knew this lake. They fished it every day or every night, and so they knew how to deal with storms. But this storm was something else. The boat was getting swamped, and they feared for their lives. And so in panic, they woke Jesus and said, Don't you even care that we're going to drown? Let's think about Jesus for a moment. He was tired. He was asleep. The storm blew up. The sound of wind and waves, to say nothing of the fact that it was probably getting wet, didn't wake him up. And on top of that, the disciples were panicking and they would have been yelling at each other. Peter, grab the other basin and help bail. I'm trying, but the water's just faster than I can bail it out. John, use your hands, use anything, help him. But none of this woke Jesus. They had to deliberately wake him. Jesus had said they were going to the other side and so he knew that they would get to the other side. Where he was lying was in the stern, the back end of the boat, and that's where you steer from. He had no doubts that they'd make it to the other side. He was silently steering the boat. The disciples, on the other hand, had set off in complete trust, but when things got too rough, they panicked. Their question on waking Jesus was, don't you care? They'd suddenly lost faith. Not only believing that they wouldn't make it to the other side, but also thinking God doesn't care what happens to us. Then we read how Jesus stood up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. And the wind stopped and there was complete calm. And Jesus said to them, what's wrong? Why are you afraid? What's happened to your faith? And that's where the disciples were just absolutely awestruck, terrified. Who is this guy? He can even tell the wind and the waves to stop. This wasn't the fear of panic. This was the fear of complete awe. Now they would have known their Psalms and Psalm 89, eight to nine 
says, Who is like you, Lord God Almighty? You, Lord, are mighty, and your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule over the surging sea. When its waves mount up, you still them. These men were with Jesus every day. They'd seen every human side of him. They'd seen that he was tired and needed sleep. But they'd also just seen him do what only God could do. So what are the lessons for us? When Jesus said, let's go to the other side, we will get to the other side. Now the journey may not be easy. We may find ourselves in a fairly desperate situation. But if Jesus has said, go to the other side, we will get there. Now we note that the disciples didn't just go to Jesus and say, hey, wake up Jesus, we need a bit of help here. They were actually in desperation. Don't you care? We're going to drown. A cry of desperation. And it's when we deliberately cry out in desperation to Jesus that we can see amazing things happen. We read that Jesus rebuked the wind. The word used is the same word used when he rebuked evil spirits. The suggestion here is that the storm was more than just a physical storm, a quirk of nature. It was an attempt by the evil one to stop them from reaching the side and setting that demonized man free. When we're doing God's will, there will be opposition. And that can be quite severe, it can be quite frightening. But if we're doing what God has told us to do, the opposition cannot win. We just need to rely on Jesus and not lose our faith. We may feel a sense of despair in the world today. I mean, violence, greed, wars, money seems to be more important than anything else. Young people are being hired to commit violent robberies. People are just thumbing their nose at God. But Jesus has said his kingdom will come and the boat will not sink while Jesus is in it. Let me know.